On behalf of the Chesapeake Shakespeare Company, welcome to this site. We are coming out to celebrate the start of construction on this landmark, beautiful building. Right here where I am standing, this is where the stage will rise. There will be two balconies, mezzanine, you can see first mezzanine will be right there. The stage, I'm told, will be that height. So you can just picture how intimate and amazing it will be. Um, construction is beginning soon, and then this will truly be a uh, cultural arts institution with so much access for school children during the year, some who will see their first Shakespeare play for the first time. It is just going to be a treasure. So let's learn more about the project. It is my pleasure to introduce to you a friend of mine and used to be a neighbor until very recently, Earl Pratt. He is the president of the Board of Trustees of the Chesapeake Shakespeare Company. Earl. Thank you, Mary. Appreciate it. And we still love you, even though we moved a few miles down the road. So welcome, everybody. Um, I'm really happy to be here. And thank you so much for all of you for coming today. I always say, any day you can hit something with a sledgehammer is a good day, right? <laughs> so um, we're really, really excited that you're, you've come here to share um, as we prepare to start construction of the, uh, the new home of the Chesapeake Shakespeare Company. So a big round of applause just for that, right? <laughs> and on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I, I want to just really welcome and thank you because there's so much that you've already done for us, uh, you know, through your collaboration and your support to make this corner of Baltimore really a special place uh, for theater and to build our community. Um, of course, I want to recognize a few people here today, so bear with me. This won't be an Academy Awards speech, but there are a lot of people who are important to our efforts that I already want to acknowledge. Of course, the first one is, is our mayor, uh, Baltimore's mayor, of course, Stephanie Rawlings-Blake, who, you know, who, who is here. And thank you, Mayor, for coming. We appreciate it. Welcome. I've been so supportive already in our early efforts to, uh, to acquire the building and, and to start the construction. Her cabinet and staff and, and so many other members of, uh, of our neighborhood here have been so uh, helpful and really rolled out the welcome mat for us here in, uh, in the Inner Harbor. Um, many of these guests have, have donated and, and given us essential advice, technical resources, financial support, and, and caring and, and volunteerism. And I'd like to say you know, their names to everybody. I can't say everybody's name today, but I do want to recognize uh, many people by name, um, if you'll, you'll bear with me. And if you could just hold your applause until I cue you, that would be great. Um, I want to thank, of course, from the Able Foundation, who's been a great, really leading early financial supporter, Bob Embry and Lynn Heller from Able Foundation. The Franz Merrick Foundation also has been a very early lead supporter financially of our organization. I want to thank them. Um, PNC also has been a lead early financial supporter. And of course, we couldn't have done anything that we've done so far without the downtown partnership, getting our community, our neighborhood here together. Um, you know, Kirby Fowler, Nan Rohrer, and Michael Evitz helping us out from, from that organization. And of course, our home and where we were born, Howard County. Uh, we couldn't do that with all the Howard County people. And of course, don't forget, we're still in Howard County. We're in Howard County right now. Come to the shows. Tammy the Shrew, Anthony Cleopatra out at the PFI in Ellicott City. Buy tickets. Sorry, a little plug there. Um, we want to say thank you to that. Colleen West of the Howard County Arts Council, Amy Grossman from the Maryland State Arts Council. Um, the state of Maryland, who's uh, had a bond bill through to help us, uh, giving us capital funding. We're so thankful for that. Everybody in the state assemblies, Baltimore City especially, representatives and Howard County representatives who came together in a partnership um, to support that legislation. Uh, we want to recognize people who are here today who did that. Senator Bill Ferguson's here today. Uh, delegates Luke Klippinger and Brian McHale, Baltimore City. Uh, District 46, where we're sitting today. Um, of course, from Howard County. Um, James uh, Roby. I also want to mention, uh, you know, Luke's uh, Clippinger's chief of staff, Greg Montrose, is here as well today. Of course, Delegate Guy Gazzoni, who's here. I want to thank him and everybody from the Howard County delegation. Uh, please, a round of applause for all these people who helped us. <laughs> of 
There are other great elected officials who have been really supportive I want to also recognize, including State Delegate Jill Carter from Baltimore. I'm also Baltimore City Council members, Bill Cole, Bill Henry, Carl Stokes, and Pete Welch. Um, and also representing Baltimore City Council, President Jack Young, Bill Driscoll, and his Chief of Staff. Um, and also not to be forgotten, the good supporter and good friends of ours, also Maryland Circuit Court Judge for the 8th Judicial Court, Larry Fletcher Hill. We'll give them a round of applause. And we couldn't do all this without the support of our arts community. We've really been welcomed here into what we're calling the theater triangle with Center Stage and Everyman, of course others at you know, Hippodrome and other great institutions. But there's especially been a few people that have really supported us and welcomed us into Baltimore City. We'd like to really thank Vin uh, Vince Lencheesy and I, uh, Ian Trussell from Everyman Theater. have been very, very helpful in sharing their experiences uh, with their new location. Of course, um, from Center Stage, uh, Kwame Kwe Arma, of course, and Stephen Richard have been great helping us out. Um, and then we also have from our theater going past and organizations from some of our founders, the Lark Play Development Center has been great. Michael Robertson and Jennifer Dora White have come down from New York City, the Lark's in New York City, to come support us. Um, you know, we really, really appreciate those people from the arts community. Let's give them a round of applause. And as Mary has mentioned, that if you're lucky enough to go to London and go to the, the rebuilt uh, Globe Theater, this is really going to look a lot like that with the, with the thrust stage and being the audience right next to the, uh, the actors. And, and we couldn't have done this without a great team of architects and builders. And we really wanted to recognize them here today. And they're going to be the ones who are going to take this forward for us. Um, I want to recognize Southway Builders who are going to be running the project for us. Uh, Paul Littman, John Deal, Ken Halfin, Dominic Dunnigan. And of course, we couldn't have done all these great plans that you see on the wall here without our great architects of Choben Holbeck and George here. Um, George Holbeck is here in person supporting us here today, and he's been great. And of course, our, our lead man on the project, uh, Con Wong, is great, and he's here as well. And so just a round of applause for those people who are going to help us build this building. So I'm not going to keep you for the rest of the program. I just wanted to give you a brief update because you're our supporters and you've been so great about where we are. This is a long-term commitment. We're here for the, you know, for the decades to come, and uh, this building is going to house our offices, not just our theater. So on the upstairs level, we'll have our, our administrative offices as well. And um, this is going to be where all the kids are going to be coming from Baltimore City as well as outside of other parts of Maryland. We're going to do 30 to 40 Romeo and Juliets every single spring because everybody studies Romeo and Juliet. It's going to be really exciting. So to do all this, we have to, of course, have a great capital campaign. We're really starting off very well through all of your support. It's a $6.7 million project. I'm happy to say we've raised $3.9 million so far, so a little applause for that. So we're, we're well on our way, and we're really excited. And I just want to thank you for supporting us and sharing our vision, and I hope to welcome you in this space in you know, late 2014. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Chesapeake Shakespeare Company turns 10 this year, which is amazing because it has not really had a home of its own, but it has this amazing reputation we know throughout Maryland and really throughout the country. And that's no thanks in part to um, its talented uh, actors and actresses and also its founding artistic director, who I'm very excited to welcome up here so he can give us more of his vision for um, the Ch Chesapeake Shakespeare Company being here now in Baltimore City. So please welcome Ian Gallinar. Ian. So we'll get to the professional speakers in a little bit, but in the meantime, you'll have to listen to me for a little bit. I'm, I'm not used to uh, talking in front of podiums. Mostly I'm up in front of our audience in flip-flops. And uh, so those of you that know, have been out to the BFI know that. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the future. Uh, but before I do that, I, I, I must admit that I'm feeling a little strange talking about, up here talking about CSC and its future without uh, my partner in all things Shakespeare, our managing director, Leslie Malin. Who's... <laughs> and of course, you know what an important uh, voice Leslie is uh, within our company. Uh, okay, so uh, 
right. I want to talk a little bit about a phrase that, uh, that I like, uh, that I use often, which is, uh, uh, wouldn't it be great if? Uh, maybe some of you use that phrase a lot, too. As in, uh, wouldn't it be great if I could lose 30 pounds? That would be great. Uh, but more importantly, wouldn't it be great if we could find a beautiful historic building in downtown Baltimore that's been a little bit misused or neglected? And what if we could turn that into a cultural center for the entire region? Wouldn't that be great? And, and wouldn't it be great if we could get, I don't know, a local architectural firm, uh, really talented guys like Cho Ben Holbeck, and, and, and we'll get some local builders, like Southway builders, and, and wouldn't it be great if we'd get those guys to create, along with us, a, a, an exciting, innovative performance space that people might talk about all across the country. Wouldn't that be great? And wouldn't it be great if in, in that space we could create performances and events that were really important to people, that people thought were fun, that they looked forward to coming to with their friends and their neighbors and, and most importantly, their families. And wouldn't it be great if we could take this block, this quiet block here in Baltimore, and bring 20,000 people every year into the streets in the evening to come share cultural experiences in this building. I think that would be great. And wouldn't, wouldn't it be great if every spring for about two months, every school, every weekday, we had buses lined up here on Calvert Street uh, and they were unloading and picking up school kids from throughout the region who were seeing uh, live performances of Romeo and Juliet, a play that they're all gonna study but have little opportunity to actually see. I think that would be great. And wouldn't it be great if we could also keep this place buzzing after school with after school programs, weekends and summers for particularly the kids, local kids, so we can share our love of Shakespeare with them. And wouldn't it be great if we could build partnerships with institutions here in the city and the state, including the schools, which I, I I think is particularly important. Wouldn't it be great that we could do that so we could be of service to our community and to our region? And what's great about today is today we get to change that phrase, wouldn't it be great if, to isn't it great that we are? Today's the day that we change, yeah. <laughs> Today is the day that we change all this conversation that we've been having for many years into action so that we can join here again uh, next year and uh, be together for the opening of the reality of all of these things. Uh, so how are we going to do that? We still have some work to do, but we'll do it like we do everything at the Ch Chesapeake Shakespeare Company. We'll do it with your help and we'll do it together. And thank you very much for being here and going to stay with us. Thank you. I am thank you. One of my favorite things to do this summer, and I know a lot of people, is to go to what I call the ruins of Howard County, have a glass of wine with good friends, and sit and watch Shakespeare. That's when I fell in love with it. And as Earl mentioned, uh, having a home here in Baltimore City is in no way abandoning the ruins of Howard County. It is a new partnership to share what is so special. So it is my pleasure to welcome Howard County Executive Ken Ullman up here. Welcome. Thank you very much, Mary. I and Leslie, thank you very much for, uh, for your leadership, and Earl and everyone on the board, thank you for, for having me. Uh, it is great to be here in the heart, in the center of the arts and cultural community for the state of Maryland on a day when it just got even stronger, even better. And I can't tell you uh, what a thrill it is to be here. Baltimore now has its very own Globe Theater, or whatever better name we're coming up with. Uh, but you know, I, I had the opportunity to be here a few months ago uh, when you were doing an event for uh, some prospective uh, investors, and I couldn't get over the building. I mean, if you, if, I know we're having this event, but if you just stop and look up, well, besides my friends who are underneath uh, the, the overhang there, but just stop and look up. I mean, you, you couldn't create this 
if you tried. I mean, you have smart architects and they're here and they probably could, but the fact that this building exists in the shape that it's in as a gem waiting for uh, this kind of uh, attention, love, uh, I, I can't tell you how excited I am to be here. And uh, this represents a partnership uh, and it's one of the things we've really tried to do in Howard County for the seven years that I've been county executive, and Colleen West was mentioned earlier as head of our Arts Council, is you know, we provide grants from Howard County every year to arts and cultural institutions in Baltimore because we believe in the partnership, we believe in regionalism, and the fact that you're going to keep your summer home out in the ruins overlooking uh, historic Main Street, Ellicott City, and have this as your home in the heart of the arts and cultural center of the state of Maryland is a perfect, perfect fit. And so I can't wait to continue to work with you to help strengthen the Chesapeake Shakespeare Company, uh, make sure that you thrive here uh, and in Howard County. And so I just wanted to say thank you to everyone here who has made this a reality. And I look forward to working with you to, be, uh, to make sure the work gets done and to be here for the opening uh, as soon as possible. It's also my great um, uh, honor to be able to bring you my partner in government, my partner in regionalism, somebody who not only works every day to promote and make sure the great city of Baltimore succeeds and thrives, but someone who also believes that it's important for us all to thrive together, your mayor, Stephanie Rawlings-Blake. Great. Hopefully this is the beginning or well, the continuation of a very long partnership. Uh, and I'm, I'm very happy to have you here. I, I love the fact that uh, Ken Ullman believes uh, with his heart and, and with his wallet uh, in partnership and doesn't, it, to me it, it's not about deficit or loss. When you think, I know that it's not, it is unusual, and I appreciate the fact that the expansion into Baltimore you, you see as a gain uh, for all of us and not a loss for Howard County. And that is how I describe uh, arts and culture in Baltimore all the time, uh, that, that what we have here is for our entire state. And I'm, I'm glad that we share the same perspective. And I'm, I'm looking forward to this partnership and, and many more in the future. And, and uh, Leslie and Ian, congratulations. I'm very proud uh, to be here. And I want to thank Chesapeake Sh um, Shakespeare Company for choosing Baltimore City and downtown as your new home. Many elected officials have already been acknowledged. I want to thank them for being here and just want to thank a few more uh, people who haven't been acknowledged. Uh, Tom Noonan from Visit Baltimore. I'm sure that you're looking forward to promoting uh, the Chesapeake Shakespeare Company as part of the arts and culture, uh, things that drive people to come to Baltimore. And I also want to thank Kirby Fowler, uh, who has been a big advocate for this project for many reasons, um, not the least of which is he wants to trade the the club wear for some Shakespeare garb <laughs> after hours. Be careful what you wish for. I heard these Shakespeare actors are wild. <laughs> Very wild. <laughs> so today marks the start of the construction on a project that will improve a Baltimore landmark and enrich downtown. The new Chesapeake Shakespeare Company Theater will be one of the jewels in Baltimore's crown of cult cultural assets. The company is renovating the historic Mercantile, Mercantile uh, Safe Deposit and Trust Company building, transforming it into a modern interpretation of Shakespeare's Globe Theater. The addition of the theater devoted to the classic adds to Baltimore's livability and will help us attract businesses, residents, and tourists to this important corridor. It is only through collaboration that this type of progress is possible. This project is a result of collaboration between the city of Baltimore, the state legislature, county leaders, philanthropic communities, and the downtown business and development community, the performing arts community, banks, and many individuals committed to improving the city's cultural tapestry and its economic strength. Again, this only works when we work together. We're grateful to each of our partners who have made today's groundbreaking or sledgehammer hammering possible. 
Our city is an abundance of wonderful theaters, each with a special niche in the performing arts. Almost every American city of comparable size to Baltimore is served by a theater devoted to the classics. And now, Baltimore will have one of its own. Chesapeake uh, Shakespeare Company will form the third point of a new downtown Baltimore theater triangle with center stage at the North Point and the Hippodrome and every man, I see Ian out there, um, forming the, the last point on the west side. Uh, these four theaters are all within a 15 minute walk of each other and will complement each other perfectly. Many of the city's theater companies are represented here today in support of this project, which is another thing I love about our arts and culture community in Baltimore. Again, we know that every time we add, we're not taken away from somebody else. We're growing exponentially, more than we could do uh, on our own. Together, our arts community is becoming one of the most vibrant on the East Coast. We are enriching lives, giving Baltimoreans more reason to enjoy downtown and giving tourists more reasons to explore our city and enjoy our cultural assets. We're also grateful for the economic boost that this project will bring to downtown. I said when I started, I'm very excited that the Chesapeake has decided to come to Baltimore to downtown Baltimore. The educational opportunities that can be acquired through reading Shakespeare plays are astounding. To paraphrase Noam Chomsky's, uh, Noam Chomsky, excuse me, scientific uh, psychology has its limits. Yet it is on this frontier where we find that fiction can be more revealing in our attempts to teach us about us. Shakespeare's works embody this boundless human spirit and all who read his work will take away valuable lessons about the human condition. I personally learned from Shakespeare that there's no greater lesson for an elected official than the words of Hamlet's uh, Polonius, or I should say, um, where did, did, did Councilman Cole have to leave? This is a lesson that I, I hope that my colleagues in the council will learn from Hamlet. <laughs> Give thy thoughts no tongue. <laughs> Chesapeake Shakespeare Company will put the Bard's works in the hands of our students. Our, our, our young people will learn about greed, about power, about humor, fear, betrayal, and sacrifice. Lessons that will deepen their well of creativity and give them the foundation on which to write their own masterpieces. For, for while Shakespeare's language is difficult, his messages are universal and timeless. And I think, again, this project is universally uh, revered as uh, one that will be a catalyst for this community. Current plans call for the Chesapeake uh, Shakespeare Company to hold more than 30 matinee, matinees per year by 2016 for uh, school children. I cannot wait to attend my first show and bring my daughter along. Thank you for being a great educational and cultural partner. Thank you again and congratulations. And I knew if I tried to thank everybody, I'd miss someone. I want to thank Bill Gilmore from BOPA, who is here. Thank you very much. I know you, I, I'm, I'm sure you barely have time with Artscape quickly approaching to, to, to be here, so I appreciate you being here. And well, as well, representing the Baltimore Development Corporation, Kim Clark. Thank you for your help on this project as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. We are ready for our photo op. One, two, three.